Good day. I mean, good morning, and uh, welcome to Fireside Chat number 21, Bearing and Sugar Tits. Sugar Tits, Tits, Tits. I just want to say Tits. Um, <laughs> I just like the word. It just rolls off the tongue. And uh, Okay, so I'm your host, Brian Martinez, and uh, I'm joined by uh, Bearing and Sugar Tits. Welcome. Hello. Bears. Hello. And, and we also have a panda. In Mike, yeah, I showed up because I like these cunts. I I like bear. <laughs> There's just a lot of bears on this stream. And but but before we get into the talk with them, uh, there's a badger that wants to say a few words. So, um, Allison. Okay, so as you have, if you've been following along, this is Shill Week at, at Badgerthon. So um, I have been shilling, and uh, it's it's been wonderful because you you guys have been responding to my shilling. Sometimes by telling me to shut up, but other times by actually becoming a patron. So I want to thank you for your generosity, and I'm also going to shill it forward, because there are some things that I want to shill that are not honey badger relate, related. Uh, first of all, there's uh, the the individual who invited us to Victoria, uh, E. J. Spurl which I'm probably mispronouncing terribly, has created a new sort of uh, event or, or, or contest. Uh, this is what he has to say about it. It's introducing hashtag write riot. I'm a writer. I've got a series of articles under my belt, and I've been published in numerous places from small local magazines to online blogs, and well over 100 articles right here on Black Trident Media. And incidentally, his, his site is blacktridentmedia.com. Um, the other night I got in touch with a number of writers via Twitter and we got to talking. Talking led to writing, writing led to talking, and before too long a loose idea was formed. Enter hashtag write riot. What we'd like to do, we'd like to gather a number of writers from across the globe to write a short story between 1, uh, 1,500 and 2,500 words based on the speculative fiction genre, which will then be published and sold with all proceeds going to a charity to help male victims of domestic violence. So um, he then goes on to explain and it's the usual, you know, because they, they're underserved. Um, and uh, so if you if you are a writer and that sounds interesting, then uh, point your media to blacktridentmedia.com or point your media, point your other thing, the browser, the browser the, to blacktridentmedia.com. There, there you go. Going, and, going well also. Oh, it never goes well. <laughs> it's always like, my best one was uh, yesterday, I believe, where I attempted to... I was saying to Karen, you know that wall in Berlin? The wall. Yeah. The wall of Berlin. Yeah, yeah. What is it called? Which one? Okay. The one in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> the wall in Berlin. What's it called? Well, What's it called? I don't know. I think there's I – can, I can actually – I think there might be one that's a little bit worse is when you couldn't tell the difference between that guy T and Tyler – <laughs> I'm not made for radio. Seriously, like this is this is me limping along. We're all speaking. sorry, sorry, Alison. I, I did interrupt. I can continue your shilling. Oh no, no. So the 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 one I wanted to chill and tell you guys to do, um to to look into is the hashtag Right Riot, um by E J Spurl on BlackTridentMedia.com. And if it interests you, take part. Um and then the other one I wanted to bring to you guys' attention is uh, by um, by a uh, someone who wrote to us. His name is uh, Matt. Uh, since a com common topic on Honey Badger Radio is free speech, I thought you might want to hear about this. As to why I'm okay, this is a this is called uh, silenced, and it is a Kickstarter to deal with censorship in the media and um, in uh, in in the general. In the media, in government, in in all, and also online media. So if you go to Clickstar, uh, click Clickstarter, Kickstarter, and uh, look up Mike Cernovich and Silenced, um, you can give him some backing for that particular particular endeavor because we certainly can, we certainly should bring more attention to how people are being censored. So there you go. This is what I want to show these two of to these two things: the Kickstarter for Silenced. And this new um, anthology for uh, men who men who experience domestic violence for the benefit of men who experience domestic violence, and I shall let Brian take it away. All right. At this point. Oh, and uh, thanks again, thanks again for all your generosity, our patrons. And yes. I don't need to do this, but I am. Yeah, I'm, thank I'm you again, him. guys. Now, Allison, you may, if you wish, you may scurry, scurry off to the hole. Um, yes. Oh, Hang on, so Alice just comes on and goes, fucking give, give us money, and then fucks off. 
That's fucking blood, isn't it? That's that's what bad uh, news do. Yeah, that's 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 my thing. I tell people to give give money to things, and then and then I fuck off in in the in the uh, in in a chorus of people screaming how horrible I am and throwing tomatoes at me. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck off now. All yeah. right, thanks, Allison. And yeah. somebody joined the call that should not have joined. Who are you? Um, uh, I, 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 I'm just a nobody. I just, I just saw somebody put it, in and I decided to come in and say hello. You know, I mean, if you want me to leave, I'll leave. I just, you know, decided to come in. Uh, yeah, I don't know how you got this link, but you're not supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> how? What? How? How? Okay. Um. Okay, sorry, no disrespect intended, but this is not for everybody, and and, and certainly not proto-humans, whatever that was. Okay, so um, <laughs> goodbye, Lucy. All right. Oh my God, what is happening? How are, how are people getting this link? Oh, I think I know. Wait, how did um uh there are people joining this chat that shouldn't be in here. Uh, maybe. Okay, well, whatever. We're gonna. I'm gonna try and control the chat as if people jump in that aren't supposed to be in here. But I don't know why that's happening. Okay, so let's start bearing sugar tits. Thank you for that. This never happens. Well, it happened once before. Somebody tweet the fucking hangout link again. I mean, it hasn't happened here, but I saw this happen on other hangouts. Someone tries to tweet the link to the to the to watching the hangout, but they accidentally tweet the link to get in the hangout. Yeah. I think I think that may have happened. Um, did Allison, if you're listening, I don't know if it was you or somebody, but if you tweeted the, um, tweeted out the. A Leo Tiberius the... invites another stream, just like Robert Gettys. <laughs> Woo! This has to. What in the fuck? That was fucking radical. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna spend the entire time kicking people out. All right, so um, bearing. And sugar tits. How did you guys? First of all, uh, how do you guys meet? And secondly, uh, when did you discover that uh, feminism was, uh, to put it mildly, um, off the rails, crazy bollocks, and uh, decided essentially to make video content? As I get rid of penises that are jumping into the stream. Um, Hello. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what the fuck? I am Dicky Buddy. <laughs> oh. Jesus. <laughs> Alright, hold on a second. This is crazy. Um, yeah, but... but um, Suck it! I think I may have to make another stream, because this shit is broken. <laughs> it may be. Oh my god, what the fuck? Alright, I'm sorry. Uh... Let me see here. Yeah, this is gonna. This is Stop this is not it. gonna work out. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do it. Just do it. We're gonna do another stream, guys, because somehow the the link to this stream got leaked, and there are people just jumping Your in. Your stream will get flagged. <laughs> <laughs> that cock was very threatening. Everyone should follow me on Facebook at Persona Dead. Bye. All right, I'm gonna put another. I'll put a link in the low bar soon. Yeah. I'm gonna go. All right, take number two. Um, we have returned. <laughs> uh, we, and, we've discovered and... the source of the leak, but we won't disclose unless yes. they do. Oh, I fucked it up. Oh, I fucked it up. Bearing did it. What a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the bear is responsible. Uh, but uh, until we live in a world where penises can be seen on the internet without, without for fear of being judged, shamed, or blocked... We cannot. We have to abide by the system in the in the interim. So I'm sorry. Maybe one day, maybe no, one day, your uncut cockhead can be seen on YouTube, and nobody will will judge it. So, but that today is not that day. <laughs> no, it, unfortunately, it's not. It's not. Ladies and gentlemen, the footage is not lost. I will uncover it, and I will then cover it, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so to, yeah. so as to immortalize that that uh, that moment of glory there. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll get right on that. Yeah, right on it. 
We'll be, you'll, but, but one day we'll be able to rock our German helmets with pride, but today is not that day. So... Uh, yes, uh, and I'm gonna. I, 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 now I'm really worried about leaving because last time I left, it all went to hell. We're gonna under control, also. We're gonna under control. Fine. <laughs> okay. All right. I, if it does again, I don't think. I, I think I'll probably have to lurk in every show from now on, just, <laughs> just for fear that a rush of peen will come through. Okay, but I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna hit the. I'm gonna hit. We the, have been confirmed. You know why all the peens came in? It's because of sugar tits. <laughs> They were drawn oh, to her. They were drawn, hey, they were drawn hey, to her. What's, what's Dr. Randy McCam's avatar? That kind of looks like a cartoon penis. What, what is that? Hey, it's, it's an embryo of sort. Sort of an embryo, sort of a fetus. Sort of somewhere in between him. Hmm. It's a confused fetus. <laughs> very, yes. It's very it's bewildered. It's difficult to tell the difference between a fetus and a cock. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> but this we get away with for some reason. Um, all right, so let's get into the questions while we can before before all the peens come. Uh, Bearing and Sugar Tits, first off, how did you guys meet? And was it over? Did you guys bond over uh, fighting against uh, feminist faggotry, or did you discover it first? And and how did you? Sugar Tits. I'll take the first part. I think it's been about 13 years Ooh. we've been together. Um, yeah, how, how did we meet? <laughs> how did we meet? Um, we met at a, a barbecue, I think. Oh, yeah. That's it. Nothing special about that one. Oh, was there drinking involved? Because it seems like it's a little vague. <laughs> yeah, were, uh, plus, it's 6 o'clock in the fucking morning here. Thanks for the scheduling, guys. Um, yeah, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we met at a, at a barbecue between like mutual friends and just um, yeah, kind of liked each other and then you know eventually fucked and then you know here we are. Oh. Um, so um, and, and the feminism question, um, I've I've got a, a mate who sort of watches all you guys and you know all the the usual shitlords and he introduced me. I introduced tits who hated the, the whole topic. She used to. Hate me watching YouTube videos for ages, but then um, oh yeah, yeah. Now she doesn't. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah. So like, um, uh, would you say that there's a lot of feminism in Australia, or it's grown, or um, is that, I I, I'm a little surprised by that, but yeah, I reckon it's growing, which is which is horrible yeah. to say, but I, I I think it is growing. Yeah, it seems like yeah. it's it's ramping up everywhere. Um, have you ever had any exciting real-life run-ins with feminists or feminism? Um, no, not, not really. I, I don't think so. We, we haven't, have we, tits? No. Hmm. Yeah, no, no, only, only internet stuff, but, um, yeah, yeah, no, I don't much care for feminists, so <laughs> I yeah. don't think I'd like that. Yeah. Um, have you run into a lot of feminism in, like, okay, did... Did you guys um, run into a lot of it in academia? Did you go to, you know, like, notice it maybe in, uh, I don't know if you guys have high school there. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> or, or, like, in university or anything like that? Um, no, not really. Um, no. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm 31 and Tits is, what, 29 or 30 or something. So it, it's, it's a fair while ago. We were in academia. Um, but... Um, no, I, I didn't notice a hell of a lot of it anyway, so it, it might have been there, I but I, I yeah, wasn't really looking for it. I didn't well, notice it. I was it the only girl in my class in uni, so... You, sort of, you don't <laughs> notice these things until you get deep into the arguments, do you? You don't even know who's a feminist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it kind of, I tell you, what, the thing that sort of shits you when you, when you, you are into it, or when you, when you are going through it as much as, as we are, Doc, is, you know... You see people who who don't know much about it and the, and the the ridiculous bullshit that they spew and you know to them it's kind of oh feminine oh, yeah, feminist you know and you just sort of think why aren't you fucking enraged don't you know how much these 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 people suck ass you know but does do you get that feeling like when, you know when you've just got to shut up? I'm sorry, what was that? I'm just asking, Doc. Do you, do you get that feeling, Doc, when you? When you're talking to people who don't sort of get into it as, as much as you do, and they they're sort of just, just very um, you know they they're just you know very apathetic about feminism. 
Um, <laughs> it's uh, well, I don't know if it's apathy, but more people would just rather not talk about it. They'd actively rather not talk about it. Mm, like, yeah. There's some, it's it's like the religion and politics thing, because it, it mm. basically is religion and politics, isn't it? Oh, it's, it is. Yeah. At the same time, it's this it's this weird amorphous creature made of equal parts religion and politics. Remember when they just went to the Vatican and shoved crucifixes up their asses? Oh yeah, <laughs> on the steps, right? Yeah, uh, like right up front. Yeah, yeah. It's basically religion clashing with religion. It's like the iconoclast all over again, in many ways. <laughs> what, what are they going to do in front of the mosques? Have they? Oh, oh, give us some <laughs> ideas, ladies. What are you going to <laughs> shove up yourselves in front of the mosques? <laughs> They're not uh, AK-47. <laughs> Do a David Cameron. Do a fucking David Cameron. Like stick something inside a pig in front of uh, them. a kebab <laughs> to, 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 protest, to protest what they do. What, uh, is is or is that not as bad as the fucking? <laughs> what what is that pig thing? What did he do? Did he get sucked off by a pig or something? What's the story there? He he apparently put his dick in a dead pig's head via his mouth. No, so this was just a, a, a rumor that some dude wrote in a book. We don't even know if it's true. We just really wanted it to be true, so we made shit. But, did, but didn't he? Didn't he backpedal on something that he he wouldn't have had to if he didn't fuck said pig's mouth? Like, wasn't that the giveaway? I'm just yeah. sort of going off. I don't think it's just one of those stories they tell about the weird, uh, fucking fucking things that posh <laughs> lads do in universities, you know. <laughs> they, they they all end up as, as politicians eventually, but it, it, for some reason they have to do this. It, it's much like the fucking skull and bones things in 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 the states, you know, or any fucking fraternity initiation. Yeah, I mean, in insa insanely drunk and doing sexual things with dead mm -hmm. animals or what have you. I think they do it just so, just as, so that they've got something on you. <laughs> It's, yeah, well, if you have a racket, yeah. just find lots of very young, sort of posh people that are destined to be politicians, and <laughs> get photos of you getting drunk and doing debaucherous <laughs> things with them, and boom, you're made for life <laughs> as soon as they become famous. <laughs> Remember this night, David? A thousand dollar check, please. <laughs> oh, well, effective. Yeah. Awesome. You know, to that, to what you were saying about. Um, uh, the people's uh, what appears to be apathy towards feminism. I I do run into it myself when I try to say, look at how you know. Uh, here are some examples of them doing uh, anywhere from you know just the regular sort of um, uh, middle of the road stuff that's still really you know anti male, damaging to to women to to the super extreme you know let me paint with my menstrual blood type shit. <laughs> Far end, and uh, a lot of times the people who are well, I would call them normies. They they respond, uh, you know, like they have problems with feminazis, what they call feminazis, which are the super extreme ones, you know, that want to ones that just want to fix the wage gap. Yeah, yeah, but they still they still think that feminism is needed. They still think that feminism is needed, and that we we just need to like you know call out the the excesses, you know, the extreme stuff, and then. Because they think the extreme stuff doesn't actually have um, a lot of influence, they don't think it's worth talking about, and they'd rather just sort of, you know, uh, look at um, the, the, the 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 sort of more reasonable uh, things that feminism wants, and they think that feminism is the only way to get there. And of course, they believe in the existence of those things too. So, like the wage gap, like I said, I've I have debunked it and told people about it several times in real life, and they still are trying to find ways to make it real. Like, but what yeah. if, you know, and they want to, they, they just don't want to accept that it's a myth. Like, they're just sort of like, but, 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 what about this? What about this? You know, also with the sentencing gap, it's the same thing. They'll be like, well, maybe women are, they get more sympathy out of the judge, and, and that's why they get lighter sentences, and maybe it's the judge and the jury that's the problem, and not necessarily, you know, like, it's a, not necessarily a man problem. I'm like, but, you haven't actually made an argument against what I'm saying. You're just trying to find another way to make it about sexism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. against women, like like even in that case, it's like yeah, the women are victims of uh, lighter sentences. It's like you know, what, mm -hmm. what the fuck are you talking about? Um, Ridiculous. Yeah, I, I noticed that uh, the people, m most people who are um, sort of like I said, average people. If if you 
show them the excesses, they will say, yes, I think that that's excessive and ridiculous. But the average stuff, the normal, the what, what we consider reasonable feminism, they will completely back up and they don't want to argue against it. And I think that's more like what what Mike was saying. Like they don't they don't find it comfortable to even uh, propose the idea that feminism may not be necessary. And in in many ways, it may have never been necessary. Well, um, they, they they think it's the truth is the problem. So they think well, the extremists are extreme at telling the truth, and the moderates are telling the truth. It, it hasn't occurred to them. No, the the extremists are lying, and the moderates are also lying. Yes, I don't frankly, give them <laughs> they're all lying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where are um, you from, Ron? I am from Chicago. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, yes, the states. So I'm. Uh, yeah, I just live here in the in in Chirac. It's probably one of the supposedly one of the rougher parts of the country. Although honestly, it's it's a little overblown. It's not really that bad, depending on where you are. But yes, Chicago. Mm. It, it's it's uh, reputation precedes it. <laughs> um, you have a fair bit of uh, gang shootings in that, don't you? I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah, Chicago has a fair few gang shootings in that, don't you? Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That was what I'm saying. But it's such a large city, though, that um, uh, you know, if, if you live in uh, certain parts of the city, you'll probably never see anything. Like, I, I live in an area that used to be really tough. Um, and, and really high in, in crime. And while there's still crime here uh, in this part of this particular neighborhood, it's so quiet most of the time. It's actually changing quite a bit. But there are parts of the city that I will never go. It, it like turns, it seriously goes from Metropolis to Mad Max. And you, so you, you can see Aww. it. Like you, you enter, yeah, you enter a certain neighborhood and all of a sudden there's nothing but liquor stores and uh, fast food places that like where all the cooking is done behind bulletproof glass, and you know that you you've entered a world of hurt. <laughs> you don't want to stay there. Do the, do, the, do the lovely citizens of these areas not venture out of of these areas? Do they just most, stay in there? Most of the yeah, most of the time the people who live in those areas don't leave. I mean, most of the most people sort of stay uh, in their in their areas, and they they. You know, they live their lives uh, for the most part without experiencing much outside of it. But it's not as though it's a gated community. Like, you can freely go wherever you wish. It just so happens that a lot of people who live in the really crime ridden, low income areas, um, they can pretty much get whatever it is they need out of life right there. So they don't tend to venture outside. And there are good people that are really trying to get out of those situations that are also there, but unfortunately, uh, the crime that happens in the, uh, the, the really bad parts of Chicago also contributes to the poverty because it makes it very difficult for people to start businesses. One of the things that I find is really interesting is if uh, when I go to those, if I have to pass through a neighborhood like that or uh, let's say I have to catch a bus there, um, I might stop in a, uh, they have those restaurants I was talking about that are like these tiny greasy spoons where all the guys cook food behind bulletproof glass and you have to put the money on this rotating, um, I don't know, it's like a spindly thing where you put the money in and they spin it around and they have the food there. Like that's how much oh, protection yeah. they, they feel like they need. And the funny thing about it is, is the people who run those businesses and the liquor stores and stuff, they're, they're actually often Middle Eastern guys that don't live in that neighborhood. They just mm. open a business in that neighborhood, and then they make money there, and then they get in their cars and they drive to wherever it is they actually live, which is a completely different area. Um, mm. it, I find it really interesting because uh, the people who actually live in those areas uh, don't often, uh, they have a very difficult time starting businesses. And uh, I, I don't, uh, I think that it has to do with the fact that uh, there's a couple things at play here, and I don't want to make this about me, but. I think that partly it's because they have been told most of their lives that um, to try to make their own way would not work out for them because they are basically just hard done by and they're victims of the system. And so they don't really make an effort. Um, and I, I think that's really unfortunate, but I do think that that's a, a large factor. So, However, um, like I said before, where I live, it's not bad at all. It used to be really bad, but now there's like condos and there's a wine tasting place here and... So yeah, I mean, once you have a wine tasting place, I think you've pretty much. That's gonna say, that's, that's a sign. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. 
So, um, what's uh, what part of Australia are you guys in? We're in uh, in, in Melbourne, in uh, Victoria, so down the east, uh, south end of Australia. Ah. Okay. Um, have you guys heard of other Australian YouTubers that talk about anti-feminist stuff, like Bane, for example? Um, yeah, Bane's probably about the only one. Oh, and um, No Holds Barred is a good one mm. as well. Um, he's pretty good. Um, yeah. But other than, other than that, no, I don't know a hell of a lot that, that, that talk about that that particular topic, no. Yeah, do there's you, another... Do you, know, do you know more? Do I know of any? Yeah. Um, I, there's one other guy I know of. His name is Spetsnaz. Um, if you've never heard of him, you should look him up. He does... It's like kind of like anti-feminist MGTOW and also just sort of male, um, like pro-male kind of stuff. It's it, yeah. Spetsnaz has really good videos. He doesn't make yeah, it very often. Yeah, how do you spell that? Uh, Spetsnaz, S-P-E-T-Z-N-A-Z, -E -Z, like the Special Forces Russian military unit. Six. And, uh, yeah, his videos are usually like 45, sometimes half hour, 45 minutes long, and, um, it's, it's very, it's super serial. His videos are super serial, so you're not going to really get a laugh out of them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a it, it's but they're good stuff though. Um, good. Speaking of which, of, of Australia, so uh, I I've always thought, and I've never been there obviously, but I've always thought of Australia as a pretty manly place because you guys have like <laughs> rugby and poisonous critters, um, fucking crocodile Dundee and shit like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like Hugh Jackman, guys, manly as fuck. So dances like a dream. Well. You say, what was that? What was that, um, Sugar Tits? <laughs> I said, yet he sings and dances like a dream. Oh, well, yeah, he's fully adaptable. I think that he may be a machine <laughs> that they program, yeah. like, what we need. Like, oh, we need Broadway, you know, um, sing and dance routine. Let's program it in the Jackman. <laughs> now we need, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Like, we now we need a guy to, to grow a massive beard and do Les Miserables. Let's program it in a jacket. <laughs> I like to think of Wolverine on Broadway. Yeah. This is why actors are also short, because it's just easier to build small robots. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the actors are, are small robots that build other small robots because they, <laughs> they, they charm the populace with their views, and people just take, oh, an actor said it, so it must be valid. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and eat that up. Yeah, I'm talking, I'm talking to you... Um, uh, what's your name? Fucking what's that woman that talked about the wage gap like a year ago? Uh, oh well, fuck it, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. It was it, one it's of those a few of them. <laughs> like one of those Arquette wenches, wasn't it? Uh, what was that? It, it was one of those Arquette. Slappers, yes, yes, Patricia it? Arquette. It was Patricia Arquette. Yes, mm -hmm. um, that's right. And uh, and then like Helen Mirren. I remember she was talking about what was it? Uh, when a man puts his armor on a woman, he's like taking ownership of her or something like that. Oh, yeah. And I, I immediately looked, I went and did a search for Helen Mirren with her husband, and I found a photo of him with his arm around her. <laughs> 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 and I, I actually made a meme. It was, uh, I took the photo and I, I put on there, um, I don't always uh, put my arm around a woman, but when I do, I assert ownership. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Helen Mirren owned... Uh, so yeah, so do you guys have, and speaking of like what I was just talking about, do you guys also have uh, what they call in, in the UK, I believe they call it lad culture or uh, ladism, I think? Uh, do you guys have something like that in oh. Australia? Uh, the, the boys, yeah, yeah. I think every <laughs> country's got it. Yeah, big um, time. Yeah. Yeah? Even, Does the, it... even, the, ch even the chicks here have it, man. <laughs> oh, the, wait, the women, the girls have it too? No, I'm joking. Not oh, okay. Well, they ought to. <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess we call it ladette culture over here. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, girls going out on you know, drinking shit tons of vodka and then scratching each other each other's eyes out at the end of the night. It's oh yeah. I don't yeah, know why we call them ladettes though. So we've we've already got a word. It's called lasses. Yes. It's, it's lads and lasses, and and yet we've decided to call. Uh, uh, debaucherous ladies, ladettes. What? What the fuck <laughs> happened to the word lasses? 
<laughs> there was a show about that, wasn't there? What was that show you watched? Tits about Ladettes or something? It was a British one. Uh, um, I don't know. There's that really old one where they take. They did an Australian one where they take, um, you know, really rough chicks from um, Australia over to that manor. In yeah, they tell you they get sluts and make them not sluts, basically. Yeah. Anyway, it was called yeah, yeah, something they put them like that. Yeah, finishing school. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Huh. <laughs> Teach yeah, them I... to be real women, like how to iron and cook and shit. <laughs> oh, the patriarchy made a show. Let it to lady. Let it to lady. That's it. Yeah, let it to lady. Somebody in the comments yeah. just said that. Um. What what's uh, okay? So I, I mean to to comment on what Mike is saying. I I think that Lass might be seen as too feminine, and Ladette is the I mean yeah. maybe that's why they're doing it. Like when I think, I think which which is uh, indicative of a deeper problem, isn't it? Oh yeah, <laughs> that the name we ordinarily well, I presume that there's some kind of Celtic language that actually called boys lads and girls lasses. I think, or, or it might just be sort of Scottish. No, it sounds like it. it sounds like they would have been, doesn't it? But this is how words evolve. For some reason, mm. the word lad evolved into, you know, a, a fucking scuffer, one of those. And the word lass <laughs> simply evolved into a, yeah, a bonnie wee lass. Nothing wrong with a lass, eh? And this is, you know, it's the same as, you know, for some reason, we, we, we gave the word for slave to male children and the word for children Person. to, to <laughs> female children. S small person, yes. Um, do you guys? I, somebody told me about uh, a uh, in Australia that you have um, sports commentary. I don't know uh, if how much of that stuff you watch. Uh, that is very un PC, and there's a lot of shit talking and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> sports commentary that's un PC. Oh, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, no. Actually, Tits watches more sports than me. Oh, I'm a fucking lazy cunt. Yeah. Tits, do you... Is that, does that happen or what? Um, I, I guess so. If you think about the the footy show, you might say there's a bit oh, of yeah, yeah. lad culture on that. Like, they, uh, I don't the... Know the footy show? Yeah, mm. um, it's Australian Rules Football. Oh, okay. Well, that sound that well, that sounds like that might be touching on what we're we're talking about. See, here in the yes, states, yeah. uh, the sports uh, as a and I'm not I'm not a sports person myself, but I've observed that here in the United States, our sports are extremely PC. People are they, they lose their jobs, they wow. their careers are ruined, and, and they have to really be careful about what they say. Pretty much, sports is I wouldn't say it's dead because obviously it still like breaks in millions of dollars. But in terms of the culture around it, um, it's in it's in a great deal of danger, and there's a lot of uh, wow. politically correct language that floats around. Yeah, it's it's really bad. Well, um, look, when those um, when those those um, commentators got in trouble for for laughing at those those dumb bimbo fucking chicks in the in the stand taking selfies of themselves, they they did absolutely nothing wrong, but they got um, they got fucking closed in on, didn't they? They got in heaps of trouble for that. Oh, yes. Uh, they did get in a lot of trouble. I remember there was uh, one guy, uh, it was a few, some years back, he was a, um, a commentator for the WNBA, which is the Women's Basketball Association here. And, so uh, so the, shit, the shit one? Yeah, the one no one watches. <laughs> yes, nobody watches the WNBA. I hate to say it. Good. What is it the Amazon said on Futurama? Good fundamentals? Um, but that's about it. <laughs> so uh, no one... Those massive, though. Yeah, no, they are. They are. Uh, but uh, he was commenting, and uh, they were talking about uh, their aggr how aggressive they were. Now, normally, uh, if you were watching a male sports event, you could make uh, comments about the way the guys were playing or their behavior, and it wouldn't, there wouldn't be any backlash. But in this case, the guy who was um, doing the announcing, he called them, uh, when they were talking about how aggressive the players were, uh, one of the guys uh, used the term nappy-headed hoes. He said, those are some nappy-headed hoes. <laughs> <laughs> that cost him his career. I mean, he was done after that. The funny thing is, though, if they if he had used language that was sort of parallel to describe male players, then it would have been fine. But when that happened, uh, I thought it was freaking hilarious. But um, <laughs> him losing his uh, essentially his career ending over it was uh, pretty. Um, I thought it was pretty extreme. But I think that was 
it's probably been going on before that, but that was certainly a sign of the times where mm -hmm. to comment on um, on uh, sports uh, stuff or even just like the behavior of sports um, athletes was in danger here in the in the states. Like we we look very closely at what. Um, men specifically, what men do um, that are athletes and what they do in their personal life, and if they don't, um, if they don't have a, a completely clean record, uh, there are feminists and SJWs that will try to ruin that person's career. Ironically, though, if a woman is violent, uh, like a female athlete, or does stuff, we tend to, well, they tend to forgive or overlook or otherwise excuse her behavior. Well, it may seem yeah. like sports is sort of a male-dominated arena, but the media is an, has, has for some time been a female-dominated arena. You know, it's, it's the women that do the complaining. It's, it's the women that seem to make all the decisions. And sport would be nothing like as popular as it is without the media. If, you yeah. know, if there were still 7 billion people here but we didn't have TVs and shit, then there would, we wouldn't be packing out stadiums and sports teams because nobody would be watching it. You know, mm. we, we, the, you build the shelves and, and they will. You, if you build it, they will come, I think is the appropriate phrase. Mm -hmm. uh, so so the, the, even though sports may be almost entirely male, it is beholden to the broadcast media industry, which is, like I say, uh, feminists pretty much own it at this point. So, of course, you can get sacked for, for offending the PC mob because feminists are in charge of the PC mob. Mm -hmm. There was one example... Um, in Australian rules football down here that um, I thought was sort of a representative of, of a, how Australians view, you know, PC bullshit. Um, uh, so that one of our Australian of the year, I think it was like two, he won like two, three years ago. His name's Adam Goods and he's a football player for Sydney. And um, I think someone in the crowd, it was like a 14-year-old girl, yelled out monkey or something. He's an um, Aboriginal football player, yeah, by the way. By the way, yeah, sorry. He's an Aboriginal football player. And um, uh, he sort of stopped the whole game. He went, like, walked over to her and pointed his finger at her and had her ejected from the game. And, and then <laughs> A 14-year-old girl. Yeah, wow. then it was this massive um, story, like, on the, you know, the media following was nuts. As, you know, they shamed her, like... Absolutely, um, you know, ridiculed her, and um, ever since then, like, there's been a bit of a sore spot with him. And a couple of years ago, um, the crowd were booing him. It became this sort of a culture that every time he had the ball, everyone in the crowd would boo him. Um, mm, and funny as him. fuck. <laughs> and um, he he uh, one particular match, he had enough. As he turned around at a couple of uh, fans and sort of um, acted out that he was throwing a, a spear at them, like a war dance. And, um, yeah, and then that made him even more unpopular. And then, he, you know, he, this whole thing tried to come out where the media was going, oh, you know, Australians have got a, a bad um, racist culture, like it's a big problem, everyone in Australia is racist. And, mm -hmm. and, um that yeah, and, and, and no one in the in the public like sort of we, were going along with that sentiment, were they? Tits? It was the media telling right. us what we are, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. And um, you know, the the best thing was, I remember going to the football, and um, I think they were playing. We were playing Sydney, and uh, yeah, everyone was just you know, everyone still kept booing him and booing, him, booing. Him. He is a, people don't like to be told that they're racist when you're not racist. It's like. Yeah. But anyway, it ended up, um, he ended up quitting most, I think, because of it. And so oh, then we gave him Australian of the Year. Fucking smart. No, no, that you. was before he quit, but uh, apparently oh. he wants to get into politics now. Oh, fucking awesome. Oh, great. Yeah. I, I, uh, <laughs> people don't accept my views, so now I'm going to force them by becoming a politician. <laughs> um, awesome. I hope that goes over really well for him. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Uh, so... Allison and, and Karen re recently did a rant zerker on Chris Gale. Do you guys know about uh, that? Oh, yeah. I did um, really on him. Oh, you did? Okay. So I was just going to ask, uh, what did the citizens of Australia, uh, how did they react to that? Um, and then what do you think about that? It says the news report that was used in the video really made a big deal out of it. Yeah. 
Yeah, Tits, you you can handle this one. I think it was hilarious. I think the media completely do you know they do what they always do. They blow, blew it up at it into this crazy thing, and and uh, you can tell even the female reporter who was involved, like she was completely embarrassed about the whole thing. She did a, a follow up interview. Um, basically saying uh, he's apologised, um, I've accepted his apology, and uh, you know we can all move on. And it just it kept going for like following you know two three weeks after this incident. It was just every feminist with a, a keyboard, you know, was or, or a news mic. In there too sensitive about you know oh rampant rampant sexism in sports. Women can't be taken seriously like. You know, it's hard enough for women to get jobs as commentators in in male sports. Like, they don't deserve to be put through this sexist, you know, <laughs> sexism during the in their work of like in their place of profession. And who um, he, was he was trying to pick up a chick sexist? I don't understand that. Oh, I, I, in my video is a great example of. Uh, there's another female commentator. It's the same guy actually. It's pretty funny. Um, he sort of um hits on her a bit too, and. She just handles it so much better. She just like smiles and 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 uh, shrugs it off, and then and then, then you know she goes along with it. And there's no nothing awkward about it. I thought it was really professional. Whereas mm. yeah, this other one, <laughs> that was terrible. Like, you, you it is your profession, right? Like you you do you don't want to have um, unfair treatment between women and men, like in their place of profession. You have to be professional to don't sit there and like sorry don't stand there and and um you know roll your eyes and make it a awk this awkward situation hmm. yeah i cannot for the life of me think of a time when it's not a good time to hit on a woman that you want to hit on i can't think <laughs> of one i mean you can hit on if you if the worst time that somebody could probably tell me is is that like while she's taking a shit and i'm like no because <laughs> that's actually a really good time because she can't Exactly, just get up and leave. Uh, she has to finish. So, are you are you are you uh, married or? Um... <laughs> no, I'm not married. I'm I'm not married. I'm I'm uh, I'm engaged. Uh, oh, okay. But uh, no, I'm not married. I'm just making a joke. I think it's I'm, you know, why not? Um, okay, so uh, who who are your favorite anti-feminist YouTubers? What are some of the uh, people that you? Also, like oh, oh, Sargon, Sargon of a cat, like every other cunt. Did you hear? I did a, I did a live stream with him the other day, and I just giggled all the way through it. Just giggled at him. <laughs> it was pretty awkward. <laughs> yeah. Who's mine bearing? What? Who's mine? Me. No. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, I'll fuck you fine. I'm not guessing who's. Besides it. you. Who do you who who's the like, the first one that sort of? Oh, know, it's Doctor Random McCam, isn't it? Yeah, being sweaty, Doctor Random McCam. Oh, Doctor Random McCam. Yeah, watching the, the videos. <laughs> yeah, he's there not even go. saying it. He doesn't give a fuck. He's just <laughs> no, I was I, I was reacting over the over, over the other voices. I think I think I'm one at the bottom of the of the of the sound heat for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm 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 all embarrassed yeah. now. <laughs> oh no! Don't be embarrassed. Yeah, I'm not really. <laughs> He's already <laughs> over it. I think it was the hat. There's something yeah. really lovable about that hat. Something soft with all of this evil feminist subject matter coming your way. You just like focus on the hat and and then pain is in. And it's the very, songs. The songs awesome. are fucking brilliant. Thanks. Oh yeah. Yeah, we should we should collab. Why? why oh, oh, should I so, yeah, I've had someone say that. I was I was just going to suggest that because of my next thing was going to be about your music and I was thinking that uh, there are like quite a few pretty talented um, people musically within uh, this sort of uh, anti-feminist uh, MRA Gamergate all that sort of anti-authoritarian bullshit community um, so, and I th I, I think there's a few, yeah. I mean, I've seen uh, uh, Vernaculus do some music, and, and of course Mike yes. does music, and uh, oh yeah, and then like uh, the people in GG have done um, a few songs, so I think there's actually quite a bit of opportunity to perhaps collab on something. In, Plus, in what did you say, GG? Is that Gamergate? Yeah, GG is Gamergate. Um, mm -hmm. 
But yes, they've made quite a few songs. I think Mike's been involved with some of the Gamergate songs too, haven't you? Uh, no. I, I, no, I just sat, sort of sat on my own and occasionally making a Gamergate song while oh, yeah. Gamergate was doing Gamergate sings. Took months mm. before before I sort of went, "Hey guys, I'm here." <laughs> I, I've seen people um, actually leave comments on our videos saying that uh, if if we had an album, they would uh, totally become uh, they would totally buy it. Uh, mm. Like if we took all of Mike's songs and maybe like you know um, if you had some songs, we could probably do that. I don't know, just something mm. I'm throwing out there, something to think about. What what do you? Let's do an album. Yeah, musically, uh, what do you what do you play, uh, Barry? And Sugar Tits, if you play too. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sugar Tits is a really good musician. Well, I play a bit of everything. I, I, I'm a guitarist. Um, I started on the guitar, but um, yeah, I, I play and I sing. I play piano. I play bass. I do my own um, percussion and shit. Um, Sugar Tits is a brilliant singer. It, it'll take a bit to get her to, to sing, but she's fucking talented. She's seriously, Aww. she's heaps in there. There you go. Oh, but I have. Um... What do you call it? Performance anxiety. So, and I'm uh, also extremely uh, critical sing, of myself. Sing, sing, I feel like, sing. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so, like, so if I said right now, Moon Age Daydream, David Bowie, no. no. Bohemian okay, Rhapsody. What? Oh, bo Bohemian Rhapsody. Yes. Wait, oh my God, it's too early in the morning for my brain to function. Um, <laughs> think, of, think of Wayne's World. I'm trying to think of Wayne's World. Uh, Wayne's World. <laughs> you know, I'm just the boy. Blood, you could just start in the middle. That's fine. Just start in the middle. Or, or you know what? Do Under Pressure. Do you know that one? Um, because no. that's a duet, and like somebody can just be Freddie, and somebody can be Bowie, and you know. No, we'll get. We'll, I will get Sugar Tits to to record right. something. We'll, we'll chuck it up real soon. All but right. um, yeah, Ace of Spades good. by uh, Moton. No, it's fine. Um, it doesn't help with like performance anxiety to throw space. songs and stuff. Throw, does, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not about helping. I'm what, about making why, things Why are you more so awkward. anxious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just do it. Stay away to heaven. Um, okay, so I can play that. That was the first song I learned to play on the guitar. That's funny. Well, of course, that's another Wayne's World thing, right? Um, yeah. No <laughs> stairway denied. No you can't stairway. play stairway with a plectrum, by the way. Yeah, keep going back. Can. Plectrum is path to dark side. You cannot play stairway with a plectrum. Unless no, I you don't. want it in two fingers somehow or so, I don't know. <laughs> everybody <laughs> wants everybody wants her to sing. I think they want us all to sing. They're they're demanding. You could do it with you, Doc, you could probably do it with one of those thumb plectrums, you know those gay thumb plectrums? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I always grow my nail long on that thumb, so I've That's always got cool. a plectrum yeah. there. So shit. Yeah. Maybe I didn't just drop the plectrum, I grew one on my thumb, I suppose. <laughs> I always thought they looked a bit creepy how, you know, the real classical, um, hardcore classical guitarists, they have one, you know, depending on if they're left-handed or right-handed, have uh, one hand that's just got super long, rounded, manicured nails, and then the other one's just dog shit. <laughs> she's she's <laughs> really? taking you on, a, on an, an emotional roller coaster here, isn't she, Doc? You're, you're, my, you're my hero, you're a freaky cunt. Fuck, make up your mind. <laughs> I didn't say he was a freaky cunt. I said that. Yeah, oh, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, I do have. I do have. Uh, well, you can sort of. T I can tell how long it's been since I played the guitar by how long the nails are on my left hand. They're quite long yeah. at the moment. But yeah, very often. Does, does the guitar like, strings wear it down? Does it like. Does that happen? Do the, do the strings wear the nails down? Well, your, your big thumbnail that you grow. Uh, no, I'm. Um, it grows faster than it gets worn down, I think, basically. Mm. Yeah, nails are pretty uh, tough stuff, you know. Yeah? It's not quite sure, bone, it's but it's, it's getting there. <laughs> I wonder oh, what oh, our oh, nails oh. are going to be like in, like, 200 years. They're going to be, like, claws. All right. In two, well, in 200 years? No, probably not much different. <laughs> 200 years. Have you seen the Guinness Book World... Yep, uh, I'm sorry, really early... What is it? The Guinness Book World? No. Okay. Yeah, we know what you're talking Someone, about. Someone Guinness help book. me. <laughs> the Guinness Book yeah. of World Records. The fucking yeah, Guinness Book. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 um, the people who grow their nails. The guy who grows his nails really long and they like curl yeah. around and stuff. Yeah. Oh, my God. Or the um the yogis. Um, You know, how some 
what do you call it, keep one hand up, and that's their way of praising God, and they like, never cut their nails. So they've got this like full-on anno, anorexic-looking arm. Yeah, it's all. freaky. Yeah. yeah, it's gross. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty freaky. I have a, a letter here I want to read to you guys. We got an email. Uh, we already responded to it, but I want to get your take. Uh, we get a lot of mail at uh, topic at badgerpod.com, totally not a shill, I'm just saying. You could send us one if you wanted. Um, and here's here goes, okay? So it's, it's Australian, so I figured I'll share. Uh, hello, Badger. So, hang on, hang on. so this, is, this is an Australian guy or something? Yes, this is an Australian guy who wrote to us. you got to um, do the accent. Uh, I can't. I'm terrible at the <laughs> accent. I can't, I can't do it. It'll sound like ass. Uh, uh, hello, Badgers. My name is Sean, and I'm a doctoral student, or yeah, doctoral, doctoral student in Australia who enjoys listening to your videos. Although I don't always agree with every opinion on your videos, I enjoy how they challenge mainstream thinking and gender discussion on gender perception in the West. I peruse the daily news in Australia every morning, and I also keep abreast of news in the scientific field as well as certain international issues. Abreast, giggity. I've also taken <laughs> I've also taken to pursuing news in the US, particularly in uh, the recent kerfuffle in college campuses. I'm looking at international research institutes for future occupation. I'm unsure of what you are looking for in a news hound, but I can provide weekly updates on of news concerning gender issues down under, such as in as this post by a feminist of why she reported a man to his employees after calling her a slut. Uh, and apparently there's an article oh. from a website called dailylife.com. Um, oh, yeah, love that website. Yes. Oh, Ford. we're Clementine talking about Clementine. Ford. Yeah, Clementine. Yeah, we got this letter a couple clam. of months ago. The clam. You thought it was pertinent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, the clam. Clem yeah. the clam. Um, I think some of the clam. badges will be frothing at this. I can also provide opinions on scientific news such as this recent report that there is no distinct difference between male and female brains. What? Oh, and then there's a link from a website called sciencealert.com. So hang on, he's saying I can, I can also, what, what's he saying? I can also provide feedback on why this is the case. Is that, is that, was, is that the um, context? I'm guessing that he's looking to uh, probably debunk this because he is a science oh, um, oh, yeah. student uh, oh, going yeah. into that. Because, you know, we often, you know, run into, especially when it comes to this male-female brain, Lacey Green just recently did a video on her Brawless channel where she brought an expert on, and um, the expert said that uh, there is no difference between male and female brains, and it's all socialization. And, of course, uh, Lacey stood there and was shocked at the revelation <laughs> that this was the case. Um, and you can totally see it on her face. Uh, so we've been hearing a lot about that, but it's all coming from sort of like sociological circles and uh, areas that are, uh, well, not real bio biological, you, you know, um, sort of... Uh, bullshit. Yeah. yeah, it's all bullshit. I mean, in my opinion, sociology is bullshit. Period. I mean, that's mm. the way I see it. I, I think that because it starts with inherent bias, essentially, um, and essentially, like uh, sociology, I just don't buy. But if I'm open to being proven wrong on it, but so far, all of it seems to be, um, you know, we have this idea, we want to push this idea. How do we do it? Well, we have this new science. It's called sociology, and all it is is basically co uh, conducting. Um, uh, most of the time, it's uh, surveys. Uh, of you know questionable s samples, uh, sample sizes with misleading questions. That's how Mary Koss uh, ended up getting the one in four rape statistic. It was. is, isn't it? Yeah, she she was she was deciding who the the rape victims were, like yeah, based on on yeah her her opinion. And she wasn't she. Yeah, well, she was asking shady questions like, uh, yeah. have you ever had sex with someone? I mean, basically, the big one is, have you ever had sex with a man? Because if this was only asked of women, that was another thing. Um, while w uh, while under the influence of alcohol or drugs, when and then you didn't want to, or when you didn't want to, and um, the overwhelming majority of women uh, that said that essentially were picked out for the "Yes, I've been raped" crowd were women who actually said yes to that question. Mm. So 
but many, uh, like a large percentage of those women, when sort of like reapproached later, and they were asked, like, do you feel that you were raped? Because of course, when you uh, make these surveys, uh, it's people who are um, participating don't know what they're participating participating for. So they're not being asked, like, you know, they're not being told, this is to determine whether or not you've been raped, here are the questions. They just say, here are the questions, answer them honestly. And then after that, they say, oh shit, you've been raped, you know. But when mm. those women were actually asked after the fact, uh, a large percentage of them, I want to say it was like over 70%, but I'm not certain, said that uh, when they were asked directly, do you feel that you were raped in this instance, they said no. And a majority of those women actually went but went on to date those guys or have sex with them again. I was just going <laughs> to say that. That's right. Yeah. yeah. What a what a crock of shit. Yeah. That's fucked, isn't it? So I mean, and it's basically you know like that's the thing about uh, what I've noticed with sociology. And in, in fact, uh, a lot of times when feminist studies come out, they're often sociological and they're often misleading, uh, you know, manipulated. This deals with the wage gap, the rape culture, the um, domestic violence, uh, you know, all of those things, essentially. Uh, cat calling, all that, all that mm. bullshit. So mm. it's all about, like, how... how did we lose Brian or did we lose me? Oh, I think yeah. we did. I think yeah, so. we lost Brian. Mm. Yeah. Okay, what what were we up to? What what were we saying? I was drifting. Oh, I think he was talking about that. He was talking about that letter, wasn't he? Was that did that still have anything to do with that letter, the Australian guy's letter? I think yeah, so. Was, I think he was talking about uh, the fabrication of well, you know, um, statistics about uh, uh, wage gaps and things. But that wasn't in the letter, though, was it? That was. That no, was just no, no. Wrong. That's just where he was up to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that Mary Cost survey was bullshit. I read about that um, a few months ago, and it was just yeah, absolutely ridiculous. So yeah, uh, I guess we were uh, we may have just been trying to give you a lead in to talk about Clementine Ford, if you like. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Clementine's oh. fucked. Clementine's. Fucked. Yeah. yeah. I, I, hey, Doc, your last yeah. sorry, your last song was fucking awesome. We pissed ourselves laughing. Oh, that that yeah. chicken the keyboard or whatever she had. Uh, oh, the rap thing. Yes, yeah, that wasn't really a song. I, I wouldn't call that a song. That's just mate, that, that was mate, that was a piece. It was a piece. A, a joint. That's I believe awesome. they call it a joint, darling. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did you get a reaction from her? Do you get a reaction from people you do if, where you fuck with their songs? Not often. Uh, occasionally, like uh, Johnny Mann and Israel Kane were both very pleased about it. They both went, "Oh, hey, that's awesome." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and and sometimes they're, they're less nice, but some uh, the uh, problem I can I, can I Hello. Take it down immediately. I see that you are in difficulty, so I have yeah, to Brian, come back. Brian, yeah. Brian, something failed with Brian. He. Oh yeah, he's been having serious difficulties with either his internet or his connection or something's going on with his computer. So mm. um, uh, I we can try to keep this going till he gets back on. I'm on my shitty mic, so it's not going to sound yeah. very good. We can do what we can. That sounds all right. How all did right. you go with your? How did you go with your personnel, or, or was it your personnel that you said or something? Yeah, I just it's it's good. It's it's gone. It's, what does that? What does that mean? Does that mean staff oh, or something? It's people being people. People doing dramas, mm. stuff like that. It's it's no big deal. It's just <laughs> what you do when you have when you're dealing with lots of different people. So, so do you just like do you just listen to the stream like on, on some earbuds while you're doing other stuff to see if like we fuck it up or not? Um, I, I keep an eye out to see what's going on, so I'll try <laughs> something fucking up way, way, way beyond someone's ability to handle. In this case, I'm <laughs> dropping out. You know, it's sort of my job to keep uh, tabs on, on the things that are going on and make mm. sure that uh, even if they don't run smoothly, they still run. <laughs> mm. Yeah, okay, so... He had a series of questions, and I will open them up. Um, did he? Did you? You? You, you described your experience of becoming um, anti-feminist. I just got, I just got past, yes. uh, yeah. Sean's letter. Sean's just, letter. All right. Yeah. All right. We, we're just talking okay. about that, basically. So, did you get to the question? Would you say there's a lot of feminists in Australia? Yeah, 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 yeah. We did that one. We did that one. So I think yeah, he was reading the letter. I think he was near the end of the letter, and he was going to ask us something about the letter. 
Oh yeah, did he inform you that the that Sean is also a part of uh, Honey Badger Brigade right now? He's helping us with translating articles from Australian into English. <laughs> oh right, no. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. You only you've only got one employee for that. <laughs> yeah, no, well, well, you know, we have the one that does the the first pass, and then another one takes it from <laughs> middle between Australian and English. You see, Sean takes it from Australian. To a midway between Australian and English, and then we have someone who's, who's you know, English is their main language, and they take it all the rest of the way. <laughs> Fair enough. There Fair you go. Enough. So yeah, um, let me just open that up, and we'll try to go forward with that one. Sure. Okay. I believe the findings of a spectrum. Oh, this is this is this is bio stuff. I wonder if we should. Um. Oh, this this fellow's bio. Yeah, he's a, he's a bioscience scientist. Okay, I can also, oh, he, this is what he was offering. <laughs> uh, apparently, um, uh, okay, I peruse the daily media in Australia every morning, um, and I can provide weekly updates of news concerning gender issues down under, such as this post by a feminist about why she reported a man to his employers for calling her a slut. Hmm. And, of course, we have Clementine Ford. <laughs> Why I reported hotel supervisor Michael Nolan's abusive comment to his employer. Yeah. Did you see this? Oh yeah, yeah. It's fucked. Oh, yeah. It was. It's, it's such a double standard. She's a fucking idiot, Clementine. Yeah, I just, I, I, I haven't actually seen this. But if you guys want to, what, what's it like sharing a nation with Clementine Ford? Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. It really is. I think about it all the time. Like she lives in our city. Even that's that's fucked. Smell her armpits. Yeah, she lives in Melbourne. She's on the other side of it. Is she often Sorry, in the news doing something heroic? Well, she's often in the news because she writes a fucking column. Yeah, the chair she got yeah. that, I don't know. Oh. Yeah. She wrote some shitty column. Did you, Did you know she's a fucking, she's a, um, a rolly derb, derby chick. She's one of those, like, big lesbians. They're funny, oh. Jack. You'd see her doing it, can't you? Big Clementine. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so